Ah, this is what I've been waiting for. Cat Williams. Goodness. Y'all watch that interview? First of all, let's give <laughs> Shannon Sharp his props. Not only finding his perfect, his, his, his sweet spot is this. First take, I don't even watch first take like that, but um, he, he's great at that, I'm sure. I've seen him on Undisputed. I'm sure, I know he's great. Boy, I used to work with Shannon. I used to go when he was uh, CBS like 20 years ago, right? And that wasn't his best fit because he had way more personality than they would allow in those, you know, those studio shows uh, like that. But he done found it now. He is Mr. Oprah. <laughs> Sucker there to be interviewing. But this is why he was such a good interview. Because he let it stir. He let it cook. He was like, you can take over, Cat. I mean, they here for you. They here, they here with me, but they here for you. And they want to hear it. And boy, did we hear it. Oh, my God. Cat Williams came up there, I mean, just blaze, cat, cat, cat. And he said it. All lies will be exposed. And that hit me in the heart. Why that hit me in the heart is because, ah, obviously, you guys are rock with me and um, all 145,000 of you subscribers and more and growing. Um, there's been times when I've had to expose. And I always feel a little dirty doing it, right? I'm like, am I doing this? And is this going to make the world better or am I coming off as bitter? And I was watching Cat Williams and my wife was asking me that. And a few of my boys on group text, uh, they were like, he looked bitter. He sound bitter. And I was like, I don't know. I think he's course correcting. I think this is for the better. And I know when I do it, I feel it's for the better. But at the same time, you will catch cats who will say, eh, you sound bitter. If you talk about somebody, and you're lying about that person, right? Who's going to correct you? Whoever corrects you, they're going to call either a hater or bitter. But all he's doing is correcting you. Catching that? That's what Cat Williams, I think, got boxed into, even though I think he magnificently came out of this interview. But you got to watch it for yourself and tell me. All right, so Cat Williams said all lies will be exposed. And then he had a few clips in there talking about different comedians. They had a clip in there about Joe Rogan. Comedians not funny. Not going to play that clip. It, uh, it was interesting, though. Uh, censoring comedians and how comedians can't talk right now. And, you know, choice words. You can't say the R word because uh, it hurts people. And I'm with that. If a word hurts you, I'm not going to say it. But at the same time, words don't really hurt me. So it's like... You can say retarded to me. You can say what else you midget to me, but I'm not neither one. But if you are and you're like, I want to hear it. Okay. But I do know people who are mentally challenged who don't mind being called retarded. It's weird. And you know, like I know people that are black don't mind getting called the N word <laughs> for y'all who out there like, Oh, and I do. I'm like, don't call me no N word dog. But you know, my boys, they keep saying neat. And they keep calling me that while they saying, I'm sorry, N-word. I'm sorry, Nito. I'm sorry, Ninja. My dog, Marcellus. I love you, Ninja. I'm like, what? So the point is, I'm not in that conversation. But he had a conversation about that. And I want y'all to hear that clip about censoring comedians. Tell those jokes in 2024 that they told in the 70s and the 80s. So they wouldn't have told them. But that's my point. They're not inferior people. No. If they were in this time, they would be going according to our time. Just like then, we were going according to that. Like, that's how it is in the world. There are words that we can use for a while. And when we use them for a while until somebody says, that ain't a good word, yeah. we should stop saying that. Correct. That don't make people feel good. And we stop saying the word. And we move on to another word. You can't say the R word. You can certainly say special needs. Yeah. You can certainly say spectrum. Be slow. You can, you can, you, there are things that you can say to get your point that don't have to hurt people. Right. But you would know that if what you did was construct the English language for a living. Mm -hmm. Then you would understand that part. Okay. So we caught that, right? And he's, he broke it down like cat is smart more than smart. He's alert. He will stop the giggling. <laughs> He'll be like, hey, did you just say he caught Shannon a couple times like Shannon? No, you asked me about marriage. He's like, no, I didn't. He was like, no, you did. But you got back. You got scared of it. Didn't want to talk to it. But let's go like y'all say what y'all want about cat Williams. That sucker is breaking down every syllable. But then he got to women and women comedians and 
He was talking about the lady Wanda Smith uh, when she tried to get him. Listen to what he said about female comedians. But how hard, because you have to understand, she is a female. And so you have to be careful. You have to handle her with kid gloves. Sir, sir. <laughs> you want to go ahead and take that out? You don't want to be against equality, do you? No, no. What you just said was <laughs> very unequal, sir. Bruh, but I you... think maybe you've had yeah. enough of this. <laughs> Because I think I just heard you say but can you, can that you, women are not equal and should be they, treated unequally. They and are, I, they want to be treated. You mean equal. as a comedian? No, no. They want. Listen, you understand, and I understand. Yeah. In certain situations, they want to be treated equal. Not all situations. And and what part of what you saw her get? Oh, she what, deserved everything no, you no, gave no. her. What part would have been different if she was a man? It would have just been more vicious. Yeah, that, that's, that's my point. I that's took, my point. I took all the vicious and venom away because it? I didn't have any. Plus, I understood. I'm not trying to offend black women with short hair. I'm not trying to offend heavyset women. I'm not trying to upset fellow comedians. I'm not trying to do any of that. And I can't. I am qualified to be able to do none of that and still eviscerate you because I'm smart enough to know that I need to say that you have gnarled fingers because I know your limited education means you don't know what the word means. So you can't possibly respond to it. You're not sure of the meaning. And I'm going to continue hitting you because this is what comedians do. Right. You've been masquerading that you're a comedian, too. And that's the fallacy. So and nobody in boxing fights out of their weight class. If you're a 130 pounder, you don't just show up with the 160 pounders. You stay in your weight class. Is that what you wanted to do? No. That she was out of her league when no. it came to because I she, didn't want to do any of it. I know you didn't want didn't to, want to do but once she took it there. You did you feel that you had to go there? Oh, you could you could have said, Wanda, I didn't come here for that. I just want to do the interview. I just want to talk about what happened. Oh, you misunderstand my job. My <laughs> my job is to be funny. <laughs> my job is to be funny first. My first job is to be funny. My yeah. second job is to be respectful. My third job is to be immaculate and Gaza strip it. Huh? Uh, That's non-political. I'm saying if you do it, you let a terrorist accidentally touch over here and I won't stop burning you down until there ain't nothing left. It'll literally be rubble on top of rubble and I'll still be bombing. Why? Because that's why you should mind your business. This is what F around and find out is about. Right. OK. Now, I love that. I really believe in equality so much that I know that this world is not equal. <laughs> like the world is not fair. People know the world's not fair, but they think the world's going to be equal. <sighs> people and people think you mean or wrong. Or, oh, what's wrong? What is up with you? They try to label you when you say, hold on, the world's not fair, so it won't be equal. It won't be right. I was born to turn into a six foot four. 282 pound defensive end beast went to a high school game yesterday. The best player on the court of all the games I saw was five, six and doesn't look like, and I saw his daddy. He already told her and his daddy boy was a dog. I asked everybody in the crowd that I knew, I said, like, is he going to go to the next level? They were like dog. Cause they're going to find somebody six, three to do the same damn thing. It's a six foot three dog out there right now going with that five, six person. So I believe in that we're going to treat each other the same, even though we know it ain't equal because it ain't fair. When a woman comedian comes at cat cat, like I took something off it, but do you know what? I ain't come at her sideways. And I like that point because that point is how we need to respect each other. Like dog, um, you said something to me. My turn, because every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So respect to that. Uh, he went at Ricky Smiley. Uh, man, I ain't even gonna mess with that because 
I didn't think that was that serious. Like, you know, it was his first role next Friday, so I understand why he harped on it, but I wasn't there. I'm there for the Cedric Entertainer and Steve Harvey parts. Y'all catch that? Okay, so he says, says stole his jokes, and, and he questions says talent. Full disclosure, Cedric the Entertainer is my homeboy. Used to live right across the street from him uh, for a bunch of years. Uh, so I still see him all the time. Hang, we just went to dinner maybe a month ago. Okay. That don't mean I protect nobody. <laughs> In this situation, the way Cat broke it down and the way that said responded, I believe that Cat Williams feels that said stole his joke. Why? Because back in those days, pre-social media, before the internet, if you saw somebody saying something that was dope or doing something dope, it didn't travel around the world if they didn't have audience. And if you had an audience, you could do that. Now, this is not to say he did steal the joke, but I do know this would happen. Uh, MC Hammer wasn't the first to do the running, man. <laughs> MC Hammer on the corner one day hanging out. You're like, who that little kid doing? Some little dude named Sidney just doing a running, man. Next thing you know, he does it on a video. They put me in the mix and everybody like, oh my God, Hammer dance. Now that's Sidney's dance. You see what I'm saying? So I don't always think it's even egregious. But it's just like, oh, I'm going to borrow from you, but I'm going to borrow with a bigger audience, and then it's now. Now, if you did it now, you stealing. You biting. Like all the rappers used to say, oh, man, stop biting my style. Stop biting my flow. Okay, I will. And then you know what's happened? <laughs> you know what happened in the 90s? They literally would say exactly what you said. In the 80s, 70s, you couldn't do anything that I said. And then Biggie, Biggie just would say whatever you said. Jay-Z would just say what you said, and there it went, right? So Jay-Z even took Ice-T song, 99 Problems, and it's just that's how the game went. But now, because you could be in the smallest hole-in-the-wall club in the world, but we got that camera, bro. That's going out to the world. So different times, I think that will really settle that argument. The Steve, Car <laughs> Steve Harvey stuff and Mark Curry sitcom, I never thought about that. All these years, I was like, damn. That is the same damn architect of a show. Four years later after somebody got a show, and it was a good show, Mark Curry show, but Steve Harvey's show, bigger, right? So then Steve Harvey just took his show like they were doing in the 90s. I told y'all, it's real stuff out there. So he sent some shots at him, Earthquake, who's the homie, Faison Love, <laughs> I said Faison and them. They ain't even on his level, so he's not even trying to go there. They ain't got specials. What I took from it was this, look, Cat Williams obviously had a little extra sauce in him because he got that dark matter tour coming up. He's filming a special in May. Whatever you want to call it, if he's just trying to take shots to get some relevancy, which he doesn't need, or just to get more buzz for his show, which everyone needs, um, he went out with that extra, extra hot sauce. More than that, though, I think that he just said, and this is what I feel. This is why I loved it. Man, these dudes out here... They faking it and y'all falling for the fake. So let me just tell you how it really is. And I want to know how y'all took it. Did you take it like, man, they ain't blackballing you. You just ain't getting those opportunities because you're not as good. Or did y'all take it like, oh, you do got to play a certain way. And I know for a fact in my world, I don't think that gatekeeper is the best word. I don't think that you got to play the game is the best phrase. What I think is you need to know somebody in power if you're going to flex. And if you're not going to flex, then you're going to be able to one day potentially get that power. If you stay straight and narrow, don't make any waves, la, 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 you will go unnoticed and one day people will have to notice you because you don't move your way all the way up. I think that's one course. Another course is... I'm going to do me. And when you do you, a lot of people going to distance themselves because celebrities do not like to compromise their social status for their identity or for their politics or their true feelings. They will not. I know that for a fact. Now I'm sitting here on dynamite too, because I got a phone full of messages and texts and pictures of a lot of stuff that will make waves. And sometimes it does. I see people get caught up in some waves and I'm like, Ooh, you know, I think who's doing that right now. Now it ain't me and I ain't gonna ever do it, but I'm just telling you who's doing, uh, uh, it's some, um, 
is some rapper. Yeah, some rapper out there. I'm gonna find out his name. And every time something pops off, he says something about what he knows about it too. And people are doing that to Diddy and everybody right now. I ain't built like that. Come on, man. I, I, I'm built like we did that in that moment, and that was that moment. Good, bad, or ugly. That's that moment. Well, I'm gonna bring it up 30 years later and just try to come get you because you got caught up in something else and be like, oh yeah, you know, 30 years ago, I didn't know he was like that. I was like, y'all some chicken shits. <laughs> chicken shits. <laughs> so I'm with Cat. Cat is sitting at home watching people just get away with all the faking and the lying. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. Can't be doing all that, right? So I'm with that. Now, if Cat's out there doing too much, is Cat in the wrong for correcting them? Beat it up in the comments. Let me know what you thought about it. What do you think about the interview just in general? All that said. I like the fact that he said names and numbers. He ain't come out there playing around. He ain't come out there BSing. Um, I loved his honesty. Not sure if he was completely honest with the facts. He told his truth, though. But I don't know if everything like, actually happened the way he said it. He didn't even know some of the dates at times. So, you know, who knows? But I do think he came 100 from his perspective. All right. Here's what I did hate. I hate that we're in a place right now that when you say names and numbers, you're going to get more love, attention. You're going to have me up all night. And I'm, see, this is why I'm talking about. I'm a part of it too. Then when you say something intelligent or something that's for idea, you know, like you're trying to inspire people with intelligence and ideas. Ah, I'll kill, 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 kill. Go up there and just say, Cedric Entertainer, man, that dude fat and he ain't that damn talented. And people just go for it. What is that about us? Oh, man, his honesty. That was dope. But I think that higher ratings just come from lower vibrations. And that was just as simple. That's what we saw there. But tell me what you think about it. Um, <clears throat> and do you think it was a clout chase or you think he was really trying to course correct? Keep it that simple for you guys. All right, y'all, coming up next on Never Shut Up, we are going to funk up some comments. And we're going to hit you with a Wileyism. Get up out of here. Uh, this Wileyism. This one of the doper ones right here. Not the dopest, the doper ones. Let's get through it. Next, on Never Shut Up, Brings TV and Reads TV. Wop, wop. <laughs>